leaving Tuesday, yeah. And is that your first trip to Brazil? First time in Brazil, first time uh, going to Rio. It's gonna be pretty exciting for me. What took you so long? Oh uh, man, I just, I always, all these other places had me, you know, going other places. I never had a good team to go to in Brazil. Um, it would be more of going as a tourist, but this time I'm actually going to train, so uh, it's gonna be fun. How'd you get hooked up with them? Uh, Dago and Danny Marias actually trained with uh, Scott Jorgensen. Scotty referred him to me and uh, I brought him in for my last camp and it's amazing amazing work so uh, I just continue working with him. Having, it seems like you have a little gap obviously between flights I and mean, how have you sort of spent it? Training man. Um, I mean I've, I've been trying to get done with all my uh, you know promo stuff for my sponsors just so I don't have to leave it all during camp but uh, just, just getting better. I got a crazy good fight in front of me and uh, just getting better every day. A fan asked you during the Q&A about you know Aldo's kicks obviously he's known for that. Does he do anything different kicking wise than, than anyone else you've ever seen? Or, or no? yeah, he's a he's a he's a Dutch kickboxer and he he does it very well. I mean, I meaning Dutch is like he go, he goes for it. Their style is more in your face, big combos, big low kicks. Um, doesn't really throw a lot of high kicks or you know anything unconventional. I mean, a little bit, but nothing nothing out of his normal game. But uh, it, it's something I've seen in my gym. I come from you know Rufus Sport. We have great kickboxers. We got guys that come in and out of our gym all the time that just kickbox. So uh, no, nothing I haven't seen before and, uh, that I can't prepare for. Obviously, you had a decision to make about, you know, fighting for the belt. You said you were tired of waiting. That makes a lot of sense. Now, all things being equal, would you have preferred to fight Ben again? That's hard to call, man. I mean, I'm so amped up on this Jose Aldo fight. Maybe maybe before the Aldo fight was even... I didn't even know Aldo could even happen, honestly. I should, I shot that text out just to let him know I could beat him. And then, uh, you know, all of a sudden we're in the works for a fight. So, a lot of excitement for me behind that. And uh, I definitely want to fight Ben again. I mean, I'm the last guy to beat him. I feel like I got what it takes to beat him again. And... Uh, it's just, I have to wait again. I mean, I got, I got all the in front of me, and uh, I'm excited for this. If you if you win, uh, and you're 145, I mean, UFC is going to defend you, expects you to defend the belt, right? You're going to stay at 145? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't stay forever. I mean, I'll stay, I'll defend, I'm going to defend a couple times, but uh, I mean, I wouldn't stay forever. 155 is my home. I'm very comfortable there, and uh, this is more for, uh, I'm moving down for Jose Aldo, really. I, I mean, there's nobody else in 145 that intrigues me. Jose Aldo is the reason I'm moving down to 45. So you, you wouldn't mind just defending the belt once, twice, heading right back. I wouldn't mind fighting Aldo and moving right to 55 right after that. I mean, would you ask to do that, or would you? I, don't, I already, it's been already said that I can't do that, so I don't want to. I don't want to. He's. I'm already getting a fight with Jose Aldo. I want to push it too much, you know. Wait, wait, so he said that you can't. You can't just take it and go back up. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think he did a, the UFC fight night. They were asking the same questions. He yeah. said, you know, if, if Pettis wins, it's not going to be jumping around. Because I heard like Benson called out TSP. Everybody was calling everybody else out. And he's like, no, if he wins, he's going to be sitting there and defending a couple times. When were you, when were you, where were you watching the uh, Benson Henderson fight at? Were you at home? Were you, were you watching I actually uh, hosted in, uh, in the Palms. There's a new sports bar called Hera. Uh -huh. They bought me out. I hosted there, did a meet and greet, and did a photo shoot out there. What was your reaction to the fight, seeing it after all the history you guys have had together and your history with the, with the title? Uh, I, I just I wasn't that impressed, man. I mean, like, there's a very close fight. Another, another close decision, you know, I think Henderson's last finish was Cowboy in WC. So, I mean, uh, for me, I mean, a great fighter. I respect everybody that does this sport, but I feel like I got, I got what it takes to beat this guy. How does he keep winning these these close decisions? I think it's his intensity. Intensity brings. In between rounds, he's hyping everybody up, looking like he's ready to go. I mean, but when it actually comes down to it, he's he's barely landing the hard punches. He's barely landing any kicks. I mean, it's he's doing well in the scrambles. I mean, and then and then you got to take into fact that Gilbert Melendez is one of the best lightweights in the world, also. So two close lightweights. You know, it's it's, it's hard for me to watch that and, and just be like, oh, it was a close fight because they're both good. Um, I, I come in here to finish my fights, and I, I proved it in my last two fights, and uh, I, I can't wait to do it again. I don't know. I mean, we haven't seen all those ground game. I mean, I, I don't plan on taking it down. I don't think he's plans on, you know, taking it down and staying there. So uh, I guess we'll find out. I mean, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm very comfortable with my, my skills, and uh, I, I use my ground game to get back to my feet. That's my goal. I don't want to. I don't. I don't like to stay in the ground and try winning a position or anything like that. I mean, I'm looking to stay back to my feet and get where I'm comfortable. No, I, I don't. I never said that, man. I want to fight Ben again. I mean, I, I never said uh, I beat him once, but that was a long time ago. People forgot about it already. Some, yeah, the reason, the reason me and Aldo, I, I said it already. If Aldo moved to 55, I lose my my shot again. So I, I took it in my hands, put a title fight in my own hands, man. I gotta, I gotta go get it. And uh, at 55, I, there's so many good guys. I mean, you got, you got Josh Thompson just moved up, Melendez now. You got Benson Henderson, and the division got interesting again. What? You mentioned that you're going to do a practice cut to 145. What do you walk around at like now? Right now I'm 168. I usually walk around 175, 178 when I'm fighting at 55. So I walk 10 pounds lighter. I just started doing my uh, cut, getting down to 45, and uh, 
it's going well. I mean, I'm not, I'm not feeling any different. You know, 10 pounds lighter. I feel good at practice. I usually, my practice weight was 170. I stayed at 170 all the way through. So now I'm going to bring it down 10 pounds, practice at 160, tell the fight. But I'm doing that pre-cut uh, June 4th, 5th. Did, did you make, did you reach out about the fight before you even thought about, you know, like having to go down to 145 and like take that cut? Like, did you? Now, you know what? I actually thought about it a lot. I mean, yeah. my, my teammate Eric Koch is a 145-er. So I never actually made it a reality. Yeah, he was, he was next in line to fight Jose Aldo. So, uh, you know, 145 was his weight class, 155 was mine. But I always knew I could make the weight. I mean, 155, I, I sat in the hot tub for like five minutes and made 55. What are you worried about, you know, going back up to 155 now you have to put the weight back on? Is it, is it easy to do at this stage of life? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, any given time you check my weight, it's, you know, five pounds heavy, five pounds light. Um, you drink a lot of water, you eat the right foods, and I think it's, it's very easy to do. We actually, uh, we actually thought you were much lighter. We didn't think you were 168. Now? 168 right now, yeah, yeah. Does, does that happen normally? Do you like put on? Weight? Yeah, well, I drink. I try to drink two gallons of water a day. I mean, that's 16 pounds going in through and out of your body every day. So, you check my weight in the morning, you check it at night. It's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, I do want to June. The first week of June is my first cut. So you know, getting back to what you were saying before about him looking impressive and him hyping the fight. Is that something you feel that is having more of a, an impact on judges these days when it comes to close fights? I mean, it, it shouldn't have an impact on judges, but I mean, you never know what these guys are looking at. I mean, these, the judges have never fought in mixed martial arts. They've never been in the positions we've been in. A lot of them, you know, they, they, they know their job. I mean, you can't complain with them, but I don't like to put it in their hands. I mean, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I want to finish these fights and then never go to the judges because you never know what happens. Do you anticipate it going to the scorecards or finishing with, the, with Jose? I'll finish for sure. One of us is gonna finish. I mean, both of us come hard. Um, you know, he dies out in the later rounds, but I mean, I'm coming. I'm coming hard right away. I'm not gonna try to get him tired and coast him out. I mean, we're gonna. We're both gonna come in there and then we're gonna strike. You're obviously the expert, but it's interesting to me that you said he was a Dutch style because it, I thought the Dutch were a little bit more upright, a little bit more, a little bit more upright, and they, you know, obviously they throw the leg kicks, but. I, I, I hear the Muay Thai guys are a little bit down as opposed to the, the, the Dutch guys. Yeah, and, and that's when they're fighting in kickboxing. But like when you bring the style of MMA, you always have to have a lower stance because of the wrestling. So the style of his strikes are Dutch, but his style of stance isn't Dutch. I mean, he, the, way, the way he throws his strikes is one, two, three, big low kick, big low kick, right hand, left hand. It's a Dutch combo. So like when you see different kickboxers, you know, they, they incorporate elbows, knees, you know, more of a flashy movement into their, their Muay Thai. That's where I try to base mine off of. So I come with a Taekwondo background, and I try to. My coach is from Muay Thai, so he puts that style into my strikes. But we all have to be have a lower stance because of the wrestling. Is his leg kick just that much more exceptional than others, or is it, you know? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't telegraph it. A lot of guys in MMA are still figuring out the low kick. The low kick isn't to do damage. When you do it right, it does damage. You don't have to swing hard as you can to, to do damage. When the guy doesn't see the kick coming and it lands at the right time, it's gonna do damage. So he doesn't telegraph his kicks. He doesn't like try to set it up in a traditional sense where he, he starts with his low kick, finishes up with his hands. I mean, it's just a little more advanced than most kickboxing guys right now in MMA. I, I just, I, I like the challenge, man. There wasn't like one thing where I was like, all right, I can take advantage of that. I love the challenges. I mean, I'm at the point of my career where I think I have a great team around me. I'm doing everything right. I'm getting better, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm at that age where I want to take the big fights. Uh, 55 would mean more, but 45 is still a belt. All right, guys.